Hey guys, Report Rockstar here. Today I want to chat with you about something that is not a macro. It's not really code per se. We're going to diverge a little bit and discuss a function in Excel that I think is going to be useful to most people uh, here today and when considering borrowing money. It's something that most of us do at some point in our lives. Probably buying a home is going to be one of those um, most often occurrences. And so when we do that, we need to evaluate what that's really going to cost us so we can make a wise decision. We can take a look at this before we get to the bank and have a pretty good idea of what we want to try to tackle, how much we can afford, and so on. So just something to arm ourselves with. What I've done here, there's a few inputs that will go into this formula. We have the principal, or the amount of the loan. I'm going to start out with 120000 Number of years is the length of that loan. Most of the time, uh, you've got three options, 15, 20, or 30 years are probably the most common I've seen. And so that is an updatable field for the calculation. The number of compoundings per year is how many times we make a payment. And so that eh, probably 98% of the time is going to be on a month-to-month -month basis. And your interest rate, shop around for those we'll discover how much of a difference a small percentage increase or decrease can make over the course of a loan. And then two calculations here is your interest rate per period which takes your interest rate of 3.25 divided by the compoundings per year uh, which in this case is 12. And then the number of payments is simply your compoundings per year uh, times the number of years. If I wanted to do that and make it dynamic here, I just see this 12 has been hard coded. I want it to reference this cell. So I'm going to do an equals or a plus 3.25 divided by this cell 12. Okay, now it's dynamic. So payment, let's hop in and see what we need for this guy. PMT, okay. The rate is that interest rate per period. So in this case, we see it populate here is that 0.271%. And per, and per is the number of payments, the total number, so 360. The present value of the loan is, of course, 120,000. I usually put this in as a negative because it's going to be representing money going out. So a negative there. Future value is at the, the end what we want this to be and I'm assuming we all want to pay this loan off. So zero or blank is going to work for this the best. And the type one or zero if you're making the payment at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. Most of these are going to be at the end of the month um, but really it is going to offset it basically by one payment or one period is all it's going to do. But we're assuming zero and that's going to be probably the most common or blank is going to assume zero. We'll hit OK. $522.25. Okay, that's interesting. If you're renting a home or you're a duplex, odds are you're paying more than that right now. So at first glance it might make a lot of sense. Wow, I should, if I can get into a house and start earning equity on that, building equity, and I'm only going to pay 522 versus my, say, $750 rent payment, whatever that is. That sounds like a great deal. And it really, it might be. But let's take a look at a few more things, just to be more informed. So if we take our period, let's say we have a beginning balance. Our payment every month is, has two components. It has an interest portion and it has a principal reduction portion. And then ending balance. Great. Our period, we need how many? 360, it says here. So I'm going to do a little calculation, just equals or a plus. Up arrow, then add one more. So two, and then if you drag at the bottom right hand corner, you can actually drag this down. Great, and I'm going to take this all the way down, 300 and 60 some odd payments. 359, 360 is what I want, perfect. All right, so the beginning balance, of course, 120. Our interest 
paid and our principal reduction, if we add those together, are going to make up our monthly payment. So we need to now calculate the interest portion of that. So our interest rate per period is this guy. I'm going to add an absolute reference on that with F4, so it will always reference that cell multiplied by our current balance. $325 of this monthly payment, the very first one, is going to go towards interest, or the cost of borrowing the money. And the principal reduction was your payment less the interest. I need to hard or absolute reference that, so it will remain on the payment. $197.25. That's all that's going to be reducing from your balance, which is the 120,000 less your principal reduction. And so again, that 325, that interest paid, is what you are paying the bank to borrow the money. Pretty simple concept. 119.83. All right, is your ending balance after you've made your 522 payment. We're going to need to add. Uh, in our formula here, an adjustment, so this will keep working. If you think about it, we have our beginning balance, we make our payment, if we add those together, 522.25. Of that, the reduction of principal, 197, gives us an ending balance. That's at the end of the month. Then the first of the month rolls around, say if that was January, now February. Our beginning balance should equal prior month's ending balance, right? So, once we do that, then we can drag this guy down, and that looks more appropriate. So I'll highlight this again. Yep, 522.25. Perfect. I'm going to just double click here with the cross in the bottom right hand corner. It will drag that uh, formula all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to, for visual reference, do a freeze pane and freeze panes. That puts kind of a gray line here. That just simply locks the cell there, the upper cells, in view so I don't lose my headers. Okay, so one interesting thing as we scroll down to notice is this interest paid, 325, is substantial. It's more than what you're reducing your principal by, which is uh, somewhat disconcerting when you think about. You'll notice, however, that as the life of this loan progresses, there's an inverse relationship between these two. Your interest rate is dropping, or excuse me, your interest paid is dropping, while your principal reduction is growing. So in the beginning, you're paying a lot to interest, and you're not reducing your your balance by very much. And then as this progresses, these will flip, and once you get down towards the end, look how much interest you're paying, only $1.41, uh, and almost in entirety, you are reducing that balance. So we get down to 360 payments in this case, and hit zero, 360, so we like what we see, perfect. I'm going to add up our interest, and that uh, might be kind of a shocking number. We're going to pay $68,000 to the bank for the right to borrow that $120,000 today. And this concept goes along with the time value of money, uh, which is a very important concept. Einstein uh, talked about, specifically, he talked about compounding interest, which this is an example of, as being uh, next to one of the wonders of the world, basically. A very powerful concept. And so that's why it's important for us to be knowledgeable about it, as we'll all come across this at some point in our lives, most likely. All right, so I'm going to label these interest, total interest, paid, principal, Did I spell it right? Principal, a little addition here, our interest plus our principal. So total cost. Total cost of your loan is $188,000. So good to keep that in mind as you're shopping for a house. Uh, what this is really going to cost you over the next 30 years? It's not $120,000, it's $188,000. So again, now we can take a look at these uh, options here and say, you know, uh, 522 per month, that's not so bad. I could, I could probably get a little nicer home. Okay, let's take a look at a 
$200,000 home. Okay, we can see our payment has increased to eight seventy. dollars oh, Okay, not too bad. And we now see that our interest has increased. That we're paying 113000 Yeah, that makes sense. I'm borrowing more, so I'm going to have to pay the bank more. Okay. Hmm. Good to note. Number of years, if we want to change that, 30 is, is probably most common. It is most common, but uh, I see 20 once in a while. So if I hit 20, these now are irrelevant because there's only 240 payments. So I need to come back up here and would need to adjust this sheet. But after 240, we can see we hit zero now. So I'm going to leave this at 30 for now. But you can certainly play with that. Number of compoundings per year. I'd be surprised if you come across anything other than 12, but you can change it if you need and an interest rate three and a quarter percent this can change quite uh, a bit as far as how your interest <clears throat> pans out so I would encourage you to really shop around and find a good interest rate let's say instead of 3.25 let's just go with three and see what happens so 113,000 now well wow, okay so that's just write about ten thousand dollars in interest that we will not have to pay simply by having a quarter of a percent lower interest rate so it doesn't really seem like a lot well three percent three and a quarter percent four eh, percent eh, not so much but it really does make a substantial difference so that is uh, important to keep in mind as you are shopping around with different banks and institutions as a well, maybe not so much anymore, but as somewhat of a general rule, at least used to be, credit unions tended to have a little bit lower interest rates on average. I think that's kind of changing a little bit and maybe not as common anymore than, say, just a regular bank. However, I would certainly recommend in exploring that opportunity there with a credit union. So here you go. Here's the end of it. And uh, this is downloadable in the link below. So you're welcome to have it, play with it, and make use of it to educate yourself. All right. Have a good one, Report Rockstar. Signing out.